Thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner, I'm a newly elected member and this is my first question I'm asking to a Commissioner, so I've tried to single out the most pressing um, issues in my mind. Um, the first of them is uh, there are EU policies of mass surveillance and bulk data collection, such as data retention, PNR, um, TFTP, that have in the past been annulled by the Court of Justice or turned out to be inefficient or even to produce wrong data, like um, in Denmark there's a, a big scandal of convictions based on wrongly retained data, you may have heard of that. Do you think the, the new Commission should extend these bulk collection policies and make new proposals, or do you think it's time uh, for a moratorium and to no longer use these means of mass surveillance programs? The second question is um, concerns data retention specifically. Um, as the Court of Justice has found this policy to be disproportionate, why doesn't the Commission take member states to court um, that still uh, uphold national laws um, that incorporate indiscriminate data retention? And the third, third question uh, concerns terrorist content. Um, do you have any factual basis, any evidence that could clearly demonstrate us that deleting terrorist content will reduce terrorism. What, what kind of facts and studies are you relying on in that respect? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, on uh, information sharing, uh, uh, particularly in the fight against terrorism, there's been a massive increase in the amount of information that is shared between member state authorities in this shared fight against terrorism. That doesn't mean that there aren't some further things that we need to uh, pursue. Uh, there are, and we will have an opportunity to talk about them more in uh, detail. Uh, on the question of protection of individuals' rights, uh, I think that you will find in the discussions that we have in this committee uh, that we always focus in on whether the protections that are involved in any piece of legislation or any action that we're proposing are sufficiently robust, uh, particularly around confidentiality and the right to a, a private life. Uh, and if at any stage you feel that we're not giving that proper attention, uh, please say so, and we will uh, uh, seek to uh, answer, your, uh, answer your inquiry. On the question of data retention, um, it, it is a subject, a live subject. Uh, we're not pursuing infringement proceedings at the moment against uh, those member states who still uh, have national data retention legislation. We are, as I said, uh, seeking to work out how best to approach this whole area to take account of the court judgment, to take account of pending court cases, which we are hoping will, uh, the, the, there'll be some movement on soon, and to take account of the now quite extensive exchanges we've had with um, uh, civil society and law enforcement about how to find a way of balancing uh, their need to do their work, including on occasion using retained data on the one hand and the legal position set out very clearly by the court on the other. If there was a simple answer, we'd have, we'd have found it by now. There isn't. Uh, but we are committed to working on this. We will come back to you with further views before the end of this year. Uh, on uh, illegal content, and then I will stop, uh, we uh, agree that there is a wider debate to be had about uh, a different range of harms that can arise uh, online. Uh, and I note that uh, the president-elect has said in her political guidelines that she's going to look at a new Digital Services Act to upgrade our liability and safety rules for digital platforms, services, products, and complete our digital single market. So this wider debate is going to uh, take place uh, uh, over the coming months. But there is also a need, and I say it's an urgent need, to address the particular case of illegal terrorist content because it is a, a clear and present uh, challenge. Uh, are there studies that show that deleting terrorist content would reduce terrorism? There are studies, there are case studies, that show that, it, that people who have been radicalized, including people who are radicalized and passed on to commit terrorist acts, had been radicalized, at least in part, online. 
So uh, I don't think we can ignore this challenge. We have to get our reaction to it, our response to it, right. And that's the basis of the discussions that we will be having uh, with you on our proposals for legislation.